Hey guys, I have tried to make this video several times and it just keeps getting really long and stretched out, so let me try to be brief. Uh, there will be a couple links below. As you all know, the National Defense Authorization Act, it's still pending, still pending, but it's probably going to be passed because it's the National Defense Authorization Act. Because if we don't pass that, the troops are going to starve and not have guns and, and we got to declare war on America with it. It's the easiest way. It's probably going to pass. The president said he's going to veto it. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. This is the kicker, you know, Occupy Wall Street, by at least via Alexander Higgins' blog, has now been declared a terrorist organization. So, to every one of you occupiers, welcome now to the same category that the Tea Party, uh, militia groups, uh, three percenters, oath keepers, and I can't tell you, I saw when I, was a, when I was a soldier, I saw a list of what they call terror organizations. Now, it's huge. Essentially, all you have to do is disagree with the government. Even Christians are now wrapped in it. So, welcome Occupy Wall Street. You just joined the majority of America and becoming terrorists. I don't know that it's an absolute or that his blog is right, but it just seems to be par for the course and makes a lot of sense. But here's the kicker. I was just talking with a friend of mine, former Special Forces. For those of you that don't know, I was a member of Army Psychological Warfare for a period of about five years in the Army Reserve, and I served a tour in Afghanistan. As such, it was a privilege to do so because I got to work with the best of the best. And I didn't have to go through a whole, whole lot of training in order to do it, but I got to work with Special Forces, with Navy SEALs, with Army Rangers, with Air Force Parajumpers, and you just go down the list. FBI, OGA, CIA, got to work with all of them at some point. So this is what my buddy tells me. He says uh, an acquaintance of his at Fort Lewis, Washington, well, well, there's been a lot of talk amongst these Special Forces teams, a lot of talk, and it's been about Osama bin Laden and his killing. Now, if you're like me, you know that Osama bin Laden has already been dead and nobody killed him because he wasn't alive to kill in the first place. You also know that dumping his body in the ocean was not in proper accordance with Muslim law or tradition. And the story the federal government told us changed four times. So they've been having a lot of discussion amongst themselves and with Navy SEALs and et cetera, et cetera, trying to figure out what actually went down. Why is this big lie being told? And the thing that, he, that my friend is telling me, and this, it's hearsay, but it's a good source, he's telling me that... Uh, well, they're all realizing this, this giant lie, this, this has some play. There's a reason they told this giant lie. Since it was a giant lie, they, they're, they're reaching. They're just reaching out there trying to figure out why. And what I really like to hear is this. These special operators are very, very smart. You don't even get considered to go in unless you have basically an intelligence score of about 90%. And when I say 90%, I mean that, that means 1 in 10 people on the planet generally might be smarter than you. Outside of that, you're smarter than 9 out of 10. That's what it takes just to be considered. So these very smart people are reaching out and trying to find answers, and because they're trying to find answers based on a big lie, there are none. So guess which direction they've all started to go. They all started looking back to the beginning of this whole war on terror, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, the war in Yemen, the war in Libya. The uh, now operators in Uganda at the foothills of Ethiopia. They want to know why. But where did it all start? It all started on 9-11. And any smart person, especially somebody that's smarter than 90% of the people around them, can look back now on the evidence. Because Niels Herrett of Copenhagen University has a peer-reviewed paper, scientific fact that nanothermate that's only made by two companies in the United States was found in every single sample of the dust in the buildings. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth just keeps getting bigger and has mathematical scientific fact that the entire story is a lie. So these very smart people are starting to look back that direction and realize it was a big lie. Now, I brought up the FEMA camps and Occupy Wall Street for a reason, because there is concern that the federal government's going to come out and try to round you up at some point if you disagree lock you in a camp and do this same way Hitler and Stalin and you know this has been done over and over and over again it would just be history repeating itself but one if you have firearms and if you're watching this channel you probably do are you gonna go with them meekly or are you gonna open fire and empty the entire magazine reload if possible and keep emptying you know probably you're gonna go with that because hell you don't have any option if you're about to be dragged off to a detention camp right they might kill you there defense of your own life and freedom. You have every right to it. Even biblically, man comes into your house, kill that man. So, you've got that. These special operators, the special forces, special operations was created by John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, if you've listened to his speeches, knew something was up. He did talk about a grand conspiracy and he did not say it was communism. He knew what was going on. 
John F. Kennedy created special forces, Navy SEALs, all these special operations units. So he also has a directive that goes from one team sergeant to the next to the next. Only the enlisted guys, not the officers. And that directive is simple. If the federal government goes rogue, every enlisted team sergeant, the man in charge, must have a plan. They must have a plan in place if the government goes rogue to deal with that situation. Special Forces trains guerrillas and insurgents. And if they decide that the federal government's gone rogue, they're going to be all over this country training you and I how to fight back and restore our Constitution, I suppose, because obviously it's been gutted. So looking at that, it's like, well, the Army's probably not going to participate. And yeah, they got NORTHCOM ready. And they got 20,000 soldiers, but if they bring NORTHCOM out, it's only 20,000 soldiers. Okay, sure, they can go into one city and cause trouble, but the second a single camera captures a picture of them killing a citizen in total violation of posse comitatus, it is game on. And I don't, I honestly don't think the federal government has any standing support really left. I honestly can see the whole country starting to just fracture under all the bullshit and the lies and the bad economy. You know, they're saying 8.6% unemployment now because they dumped a whole shitload of people off the unemployment rolls, not because they added any jobs. And they kind of did that right in our face. And, you know, Fast and, Fur Fast and Furious, it's not a conspiracy theory anymore that, that we deliberately sold firearms to Mexican drug cartels so that they could later use it as an agenda to take our weapon rights away to protect Mexico. And it's even coming to light that DEA, DEA is laundering drug money for the cartels. So for what, the third, third time in the last 30 years, the CIA's, or I'm sorry, the federal government's getting caught handling drug money? No big surprise. The thing is, it's, gonna come, it's coming as a surprise to a lot of people that this is how bad it really is. The whole thing's fracturing. I don't know where it's going to go from here, but I'll tell you right now, they can activate 600 FEMA camps. They can, they can try to get the military ready, but they're losing. They are losing their support base based on their lies. And, hey, congratulations, America. There hasn't been any ridiculous uprising. Occupy Wall Street has done a really good job of not losing their shit. The Tea Party did a good job. Everyone's been doing, you know, the, uh, the Martin Luther King passive resistance. Uh, it seems to be working. And the federal government's scared. They're trying to turn Americans against Americans in order to protect themselves, and I suppose bring about this whole New World Order. But the whole thing seems to be falling apart at the seams. I will tell you this. If anyone is ever going to round Americans up, lock them in detention centers, and start terminating them, the only, the only, and I mean this, the only force in the world I see possible to come in here and do exactly that is the Chinese Army. And that's it. That's the only organization I see in the entire world. But getting them here is going to be a bitch. I'm not worried about it, but I am telling you, it's been three years now. Three years I've been awake, and I knew, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. But to see it all falling apart at the seams right when they seem to be getting close to their end game, it's kind of nice. I don't think the U.S. federal government has even the resource or the capability or anything to implement any kind of total tyranny here. I think they've been trying hard. I think they're failing a lot. And I think every day that we step forward now, their failures are getting bigger and more apparent to every human being that even wants to know. So, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But, you know, gold guns, getaway plan, as Gerald Salenti always says. But I wouldn't be near any big cities at all. Uh, it's not the government I'm going to be worried about. It's going to be the gangsters. The gangsters are armed. They're going to come out. They're going to come get what they think is theirs or what they just decide is theirs. It's the only place I wouldn't want to be is near a big city full of gangsters. Wouldn't want to be there. I don't know what's going to come of all of this, but I can tell you right now that when, I, when I'm hearing legitimate stories about, you know, some of the most elite operators raising some very, very big and important questions about our own government and the validity of the information it's providing and what they're really doing, federal government has a major problem when that starts to happen. So I don't know where this is all going to go. I really don't, but we will find out. But I'll, I'll make one little prediction. My thought, if you see U.S. Army NORTHCOM get marched out to start putting down the Occupy Wall Street protests, you know, when the federal government marched their army into Washington, D.C., it was legal because Washington, D.C. is a federal territory. When the Penn State shootings happened, it was Pennsylvania National Guard. It was legal for them to open fire on the students. It was, it was not a good thing. What I'm saying is it wasn't in violation of posse comitatus. Neither one of them was. There were horrible things. But if they marched the 
federal army out, active duty soldiers, and you see them kill or seriously injure one protester, you're going to start to witness the shit hitting the fan and splaying the room. So, I will uh, go ahead and shut it up here. I'll talk with you guys later, and uh, some of the links for uh, that information are below. Thank you.